The culture is what we are. The future is what we make. But the mission now is to facilitate collaboration and connection that leads to increased evidence-informed decision-making together. The oneness of our nation is a symbol of our collective individualism. With diverse people, diverse people coming from near and far to put an end to poverty and inequality in Africa. <laughs>
the connection of African nations is the development of its general population. Oh, yes. We need to. We need to gain experience and share amongst us because we are not a different people living a separate life. On the contrary, we are interconnected in ways we cannot comprehend. Reason we need to come together, both scientifically and artistically, to experience the sweetness of evidence commonality and as well. Navigation will open our minds. Abstral navigation will open our minds.
beyond our minds. The naked heart fills all these vessels and groups. Improving the environment to get things done. Open the same way. Not to be for the shop to sell. Termination! There is need. There is need for the collaboration of all those engaged evidence in bomb decision making ecosystems. My people, good people, there is need for Africa's full voice and participation in the regional, national, and global movements to increase evidence in bomb decision making.
There is need to go beyond our normal, non-scientific and inexperienced approach to situation. <laughs> Projecting the evidence, the science through art, tracing out the problems of nations through evidence dissemination. As we improve livelihood in the course of all evidence communality. In a family, I'm a bit of a bit of a inner Zang Mabur, but I'll be in a Jifa la la who and a new evidence inform decision making. Tabuta Chambi Tabuta Chambi Binaka family, I'm a bit of a inner and a new networking. Mum Africa, Zamabo Grima, Matabaji, Fa and Ye, and celebrated La Anu Africa. Tabuta Chambi Tabuta Chambi Tabuta Chambi Bob Africa, Bojima, and no networking. Bob Africa, Bojima, and no Africa. Being a song, Bob, Matabo, Yin Chambi. Hana nun tma bi nagra le wa bob Africa boji man nu evidence mum Africa le wa bob Africa boji man nu evidence mum Africa. Wabob Africa, Boji Man, Nugreta, Nun Chim Chisigan, Mum Africa, Le Wabob Africa, Boji Man, Angerma, Nun Chim. She's gonna move my freak away. Wa bob Africa, boji man, no evidence. Move my freak away. Wa bob Africa, boji man, no evidence. Move Africa. Wa bob Africa, boji man, no 
confidence boom africa lay wa bobo africa bonji man no evidence boom africa low Good afternoon to everybody. I don't know what you're feeling now. But I have a renewed sense of feeling that yes, we can. Yes, we can drive out poverty and inequality. Sure. Let's all be standing uh, for the national anthem of the Republic of Sudan. Thank you all. In between activities, we will want to observe a few housekeeping rules and um, available for this program are multiple modals that we are transmitting. The first, yes, you are here in person. Let's clap for ourselves for being here. But also, we have a great number of audience joining us remotely, and together we can connect through the mobile app deployed for this very event. So if you have not connected yet on your mobile app, please do that. It's available on the two major platforms, the Play Store and the App Store. Um, you search for uh, e Events Air Hub, Events Air App on, on either of the platforms and you can grab and register. Registration links have been personalized, so they've been sent to you if you've registered for this event. So kindly connect via the app and you can have access to all of the things, including the program itself, the safety briefing for our use um, here. Um, you can connect with the online participants as well. And then um, for refreshments, um, we all go down to ground zero on the ground floor and have that. That's where refreshments will mostly be served um, just by the reception. I'm sure many of us found that when coming in. And uh, we ask that you kindly um, mute your devices because it might interfere with the different audio, um, audiovisual setups here. So kindly mute your devices or silence them as well. Generally, there will be three um, sessions happening. This will be the main room where we will be having most of the events, but there is another room, a conference room one, where normally the breakout room, one of the breakout rooms will be held, and it's on the first floor. So the next floor after here, we are on the second floor now. And then there will be a third room, which will mostly host the incubator hub. So uh, let me acknowledge young people in here that this renewed feeling that we can is happening with you, and we have lots of expectations of young people in this network. So the Incubator Hub is there on the first floor as well, and there are directional signs to guide us in there. So it's a place I would highly recommend that you visit and see the different innovations happening on the continent. Currently, we have, um, over here now, we have about 200 people joining us in person. But online, 
we have a bigger number following through. So please um, interact with them. Let them feel your presence whilst you're here. And please, you can be um, participating in the online, online um, community as well through social media platforms. We have Twitter, we have um, Facebook, and then LinkedIn. And I think recently um, um, there's another one that has been added. Is it TikTok? Yes. There are multiple platforms. So the young people, please do your work. Thank you, Kasho. Welcome, everybody. Welcome and welcome. Kashof, the chair of uh, Evidence 2023, and myself, uh, Rona Mijumbi, a co-chair, I'm very, very pleased to have you with us today. Honorable Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the sixth biennial evidence conference. And it's a great pleasure to you know, host you uh, as part of the um, local host the Center for Rapid Evidence Synthesis are your local host, but generally the Africa Evidence Network, the Secretariat, is also very, very pleased to have you again uh, this year. It's good to have you in Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. If you have ventured outside the conference room or outside your hotel rooms, I'm sure you agree with me, you're really in the Pearl of Africa. Yeah. So Evidence 2023 is a reminder of everything that is Africa Evidence Network. The brilliance, the growth, the warmth. Everywhere I look in this room, I see brilliance. I see people and groups that have grown. And I also see lots of friendships that have blossomed over the years. Lots of warmth. But I also see resilience. Over the years, over the past few years, we've gone through a few rough patches. All of us, individually, as groups, as nations, but also as the network, we've gone through a few rough patches, but we continue to grow from strength to, str to strength, and I want to congratulate each one of us, because last week, we hit the 5,000 membership mark, and that is no mean feat. Okay. Honorable Minister, the ladies and gentlemen you see here today, are people who will not rest until poverty and iniquity have been kicked out of Africa. And they believe that there is no better way of doing this than by using the data, the information, the research, and the evidence that we have at our hands to inform the decisions, the policies and practices on the continent. They therefore work really hard to innovate and to ensure that the processes of linking that information to the final beneficiaries like yourselves and others is actually smoothened. They're here this week to share lessons, to formulate new partnerships, and to make more plans around these important matters. They have arrived at this point more than 10 years since the network began. And at this point, I would like to acknowledge our founding director, <laughs> our founding chair, sorry, uh, Ruth Stewart. Let's all really <laughs> applaud. So they have arrived here 10 years later by believing in the concept of working hard at this concept, but also working together at it. They have understood and can testify to what our West African friends, the Ghanaians proverb says and means. A single bracelet does not jingle. But also what our East African friends from Tanzania say that a single stick may smoke, but it will not burn. Indeed, as we interact over the next few days, I want to encourage us to stay connected. Stay connected with the new knowledge and the lessons that are in abundance at the conference, and stay connected with the belief we have in the evidence. Above all, I would like you to stay connected with the new and old faces in this network and family, because this, you know, uh, I'll leave you with another proverb, overload of proverbs today. But like the South African friends, the Zambians say, a person's wealth is not in the bank, but in their relationships. Take that with you. Thank you. And at this point, it's my honor and pleasure to welcome our guest of honor, 
the Honorable Akelo Beatrice Akori. She is the Minister of State in the Office of the President in charge of economic monitoring. She's also the woman member of parliament for Agago District here in Uganda in the 11th parliament, in the 11th parliament of Uganda and she serves as a member of the ruling National Resistance Movement Party. She's a distinguished political leader. She's known for her unwavering commitment to community development, to women's rights, and to economic monitoring. Please welcome with me, Honorable Beatrice. Distinguished delegates who are here, Madame Rona, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everybody. I'm delighted to see all of you here. I've been introduced. My name is Beatrice Akela Kori. the minister in charge of economic monitoring. And my ministry is directly linked to the mission of this conference. I'm very happy to be here today. <laughs> On behalf of government of Uganda, and on my own behalf, I warmly welcome all of you to the Pearl of Africa and to the Evidence 2023 conference. You're most welcome. Some of you, you could have been reading that Uganda is the Pearl of Africa and you didn't get opportunity to come to Uganda. This is a very good platform for you to witness that surely Uganda is a part of Africa. It is an honor for us in Uganda to host this evidence conference. I understand several of these conferences have been taking place in South Africa over the past decade. And to this effect, I would like to thank the organizers for, this, for choosing Uganda as your host. I was told you've been confined in South Africa, but we are very lucky as the Pearl of Africa to host this conference outside South Africa. We are really honored. I am particularly happy that as a person who uses evidence to inform cabinet submissions, to see that we gather here in this conference to discuss topical issues on using information, data, and other forms of evidence for decision making. In Uganda, I'm glad I have a team I'm going to work with to inform cabinet and executive on evidence that we have to transform our society economically. I'm so grateful. This conference is held at a time when the world is increasingly threatened by common social, economic, and health crisis such as worsening food insecurity. In Uganda, we have been hit seriously by prolonged drought. The rain has just started raining, I think a week ago. Changing weather patterns, epidemics and pandemics, all leading to widening 
inequalities and iniquities within communities, which is more true on the Africa continent. This conference provides an opportunity for you delegates to deliberate on what needs to be done differently based on evidence to make Africa safer for us, for our children and the future generations. So your being here is very, very important, very important to us. As you are aware, we live in times where access to information is defining our existence. Like uh, access to information in Uganda is a right. One may even say we are experiencing information overload. I therefore salute you for driving the idea of pushing for utilization of information and data to inform policy processes for evidence-based decisions. Kofi Hannan once said, and I quote, knowledge is power, information is liberating, of which you young people, you have come up to give us information, to liberate Africa. As government, we are really, really excited about this. The COVID-19 pandemic, which is still very fresh in our minds, revealed and confirmed our vulnerabilities as Africans and the need to invest in research, data, and information to address our socioeconomic challenges, the need for more research and generation of evidence on our indigenous knowledge in addressing some of her health challenges cannot be underrated. At times, we cut and paste. That's why some of the ideas we come up with failed. But now we are looking at how we can magnify our indigenous knowledge. It's amazing. I want to challenge you that at the end of this conference, you would have come up with deliberate, actionable resolutions on the utilization of indigenous knowledge. There are missed opportunities when we do not use what is readily available to us locally. Africa, we are very rich, but we tend to look outside Africa more. This is a time we need to think within the box. Furthermore, this evidence conference brings together policymakers, scientists like me. I'm a scientist. I'm a chemist by profession. I did chemical engineering. And civil society organizations to engage and collaborate on best practices for using information in policy processes. We've been discussing with uh, Madame Rona some of the policy that we need to review as a country. And I'm glad that uh, my directorate is signing MOU to work with them. It is important that in the spirit of Pan-Africanism and Batu, we learn together and share and support each other to build a knowledge base for evidence-informed decision-making for Africa as a continent. To appreciate use of evidence in policy processes, the government of Uganda established a framework for oversight monitoring and evaluation for the executive known as Apex platform. In my ministry, one for the first in Africa, domiciled in the office of the president and department of m and &E under the parliament of Uganda. We are about to release a report 
government has been implementing very many interventions for commercialization in agriculture for the past 13 years. So through this Apex platform, we have scrutinized, we have scrutinized all these interventions. We have seen what has worked, what has not worked, and why it has not worked. And we have come up with actionable resolutions or, or recommendations to inform the executive on what needs to be done next time as we are implementing commercialization of agriculture. Our president, General Yuweri Kakaguta Museveni, guided us that there are four sectors driving Uganda's economy, of which commercialization is one of them. So we are looking at all interventions. We have already looked at them, interventions under commercialization. So this aspect is digging evidence of what has worked, what has not worked, and what needs to be done. Allow me to recognize Professor Nelson Zitsewa Kambo and Dr. Rona Muzimbi, among other researchers here with us for their unrelenting efforts towards evidence generation and sharing. We really want to thank you so much for the good work you're doing. I commend the Uganda's Center for Rapid Evidence and Relevant Information in Timely Manner to support informed decision making. I applaud your every effort in trying to make a better world for us all through data, information, and research. I once again welcome you to this conference and the Pearl of Africa. I invite you to, I invite you all to take time off after the conference to enjoy the beauty of this country. We have so many national parks, about 10 of them. You can choose to go to one. We have historical sites. There are so many places you can go to after the conference. Feel free. Thank you so much. I declare the Evidence 2023 conference open for God and my country. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Um, I believe you have given us an additional push, you know, for the next three days, but not the three days alone. To know that government uh, appreciates what we do and actually makes use of it, I'm really proud to say we're beginning to see some of the fruits. My colleagues sometimes, I don't even think sometimes, I think many times we have sat in rooms wondering whether what we do makes a difference. Do they listen? Do they use the evidence? Do they, what are we even doing, you know? But to give an example of Apex, Apex is something that we pushed with uh, the director here um, for so many years, all through the COVID pandemic, we were trying to look at the evidence of how oversight can be done in the president's office. And five years later, we hear of a report coming out of a reform that came through evidence-informed decision-making. So I believe we have an example that can push us for the next three days. Okay. Thank you very much, Madam Minister. I will re-echo the last words of get out there, see a piece of Uganda before you leave Uganda. Thank you so much, Madam Minister. Um, we will have a break now, and we will return um, 15, 20 minutes, I'm looking for my